Internet and around the world. Our devotion for this afternoon is based on our Old Testament reading for this coming Sunday. Our Old Testament reading for this coming Sunday is Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. I want to pick up with that very last verse. Restoration. There's all kinds of things uh, in our world that... Um, over either over time or over or even just instantly need restoration maybe because they've gotten broken maybe because they've worn out maybe because um, they have just weathered or maybe for some other reason they have deteriorated and, and I want you to hear that because you know our lives need restoration our souls need restoration because our sin destroys corrupts breaks down and makes us weaker than we ought to be our sin does those things and and so we hear of the coming of Jesus to bring this restoration you know our, our minds as we hear this instantly go to Palm Sunday and we instantly remember that Jesus coming into Jerusalem to do the, the things that he did, he roll, rode on that colt, that foal of a donkey, as the disciples put their cloaks on it and walked uh, with Jesus. And they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we get the image of Jesus riding on that donkey. And as he comes, he's coming humble. He's coming as a servant. He's coming not to do a mighty battle, but to offer himself as sacrifice. To offer himself to you and me. To do the work of reconciliation. To do the work of restoration that we need by his suffering, by his death, and by his resurrection. And so the battle forces are defeated. The devil, the world, and our own sinful nature are defeated by the things that Jesus came to live, suffer, die, and rise again to bring us. So when we hear in verse 10, the words, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he will speak peace to the nations. His rule from shall be from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. All of that is this. From the river, talking about the river Jordan, but even more so, he is giving us peace. The enemies have all been cut off. The enemies that cause us pain, suffering, and harm have all been weakened and destroyed. Jesus has been victorious over them by his suffering and death and resurrection. And so the peace that he comes to bring is not peace with the world, but peace from, from him between us and God, peace from him in our hearts and in our minds, having had the burden of sin lifted and being at peace within ourselves because our sin is forgiven. And in addition, 
He's bringing life, salvation, protection, and promise. All of those things that he has done for us. And then we hear verse 11. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant, because of the shedding of his blood, because of his sacrifice on the cross, because of everything that he did to redeem us, I will set your prisoners free. Those who were trapped in hell because of their sin before Jesus came, those who are on their way there because of their sin. Jesus sets us free, sets us free from hell and gives us life in its place. And so in verse 12, when he says, return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope, we have hope in him. That absolute certainty of what he comes to give us, what he comes to bring, Life, salvation, forgiveness, peace, joy, comfort, all that he comes to bring by the gift of salvation. And so when he says the very last phrase, today I declare that I restore to you double all the things that sin took away from us, he restores to us, makes us new again, and gives us everlasting life in his presence, in his name. Amen. Please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, we praise and thank you that you came to do all these things. Born in Bethlehem, laid in a manger. You lived a perfect life. You willingly suffered and died and rose again to set us free, to destroy our enemies, to lift our burden of sin, and to give us life. Bless us and strengthen us, Lord, that we might find comfort in the one who comes with restoration to restore our souls, to restore our peace, to restore life with you forever. In your name, amen. Have a blessed Wednesday. There will be no devotion tomorrow as there is a funeral here during that time and I will be unable to do that. So um, no devotion for tomorrow. But have a blessed weekend coming up. And remember, the Lord has brought you peace with God himself. A peace that lasts forever. Have a, a blessed weekend.